In every generation, there is a chosen one. He alone will review games, all while having cringeworthy skits that also poke fun at being a YouTuber. He is the gamer. Oh, what's that? Thousands of people review games on here? Oh, well then, I guess he's not so special after all. Carry on. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Wrath of the Dark Hole King. This one's been on my list of games to review for ages, but I just can't think of any good skit ideas for it. No. Oh well, I guess I'll just shelve it until I can think of something better to do. Hey! I wouldn't do that if I were you. Here we go again. Can I get a single episode where I don't have an uninvited guest? Who are you? I don't believe this. You don't recognize me. Am I supposed to? I thought it was pretty obvious. I'm Sarah Michael Geller. Um, don't you mean Sarah Michelle Geller? You know, the star of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? No, I'm her identical twin brother. You got a problem with that? Well, you don't really look too much like her. Can you just play the game, please? I got vamps to slay, and the skits ain't getting any better from here. You know what? 11 years into doing this show, I should have known better than to try to make sense of this one. Here we go. First off, some brief history. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a 1997 television series loosely based on the movie of the same name from 1992. In the show, Sarah Michelle Gellar stars as the titular heroine. Buffy and her fellow high school friends, along with parental figure, kill coach, and school librarian Giles, work together to stop a slew of vampires, demons, witches, and more, all while battling a little thing called life. The show went on for seven seasons and was quite the cult hit, helping start up something known as the Weedinverse. That sounds like a serial universe. Hey, you're a serial universe. Nice. I don't like you. Joss Whedon, creator of the series, would also start up spin-off show Angel, additional comic books that were considered new seasons, and of course, give the approval for tons of merchandising, including video games. Most probably know the console games, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and its sequel, Chaos Bleeds. Heck, some of you may even know about the wretched Game Boy Color game. But did you know that there's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer game on the Game Boy Advance? Obviously they did. They're watching your review on it. Oh yeah? Well then how is this the only current review for the game on YouTube? What? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Why has nobody tackled this game before? Is it because it's assumedly bad? Maybe it's because it's a licensed game. Is it because it's on the Game Boy Advance? It's probably because nobody could think of a good skit idea. Present company included. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Wrath of the Dark Hole King was developed by Natsume and published by THQ in 2003, the same year the show ended. As we covered in the Action Man Game Boy Color review last year, Natsume was well known for handling franchise-based games, though this one admittedly caught my eye. Is Buffy Wrath of the Dark Hole King worth sharpening your stakes and breaking out the GBA? 
The game starts off promisingly enough with some killer title screen music that almost sounds a bit like the show's iconic intro music. Going into the options of the game, the choices involve toggling the music or sound on and off, and a chance to view the credits. Starting up the game, we get a close-up look of a book as the big bad of the game is revealed. The Dark Hole King, a demon of immense power, rained terror down for 500 years eventually opening up a portal to our dimension with a special scepter before being imprisoned in a temple by a sorceress named Elnara. With the scepter hidden, he would remain there for eternity, unless someone found it. This brings us to the time frame of, I guess, season four of Buffy. I wouldn't know. I didn't get past season three. I was way more into Angel. Yeah, that checks out. No, that's not what I meant. Sure it wasn't. I mean, the show is better in my opinion. Well, aside, aside from, from season, season four... four yeah, I don't know what they were thinking there. Wait a minute, why hasn't there been an Angel video game? That would have been awesome! Like a beat-em-up or an action game where you could play as Angel and company, beating up big bads and brooding? Yeah? Well, I would have loved to not have to get implants just to be my sister's stunt double. But you know what? We don't always get what we want. I mean, you didn't have to do that. Hey, it's a family business. And when you're here, you're family. No, that's Olive Garden. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? From here, we shift into cutscenes that are still images taken from the show featuring the cast from season four, Buffy, Willow, Xander, Anya, and Giles. There's back and forth discussion of the characters talking about topics like Buffy struggling in her women's studies class, her romance with a character named Riley, something called The Initiative, and a bad guy named Adam. This does not look like a guy named Adam. Look, I know that this is meant for people who made it to this era of the show, but for me, I was totally confused. Well, ignorance is bliss, I suppose. Ah, season four. Good times. Made a lot of money doing stunts that year. Sorry, I just can't picture you doing stunts. You just seem really out of shape. Hey, I was thinner then, okay? The show ended, and then I discovered donuts existed. Can we move on? Most of the cutscenes play out the same in this game. Giles tells Buffy to go patrolling or go check into something that she found in one of the levels that sets up plot advancement. Xander tells bad jokes, Willow Willows, you know, all the usual Buffy rhetoric. Some of the dialogue here is a bit cringy at points. Pot, meat kettle. I'll say this, the game does a good job of keeping the vibes mostly similar to the show, cutscene-wise, but how's the game play? Wrath of the Dark Hole King is an action platformer where Buffy will use combat with the A and B buttons, jump with the R button, and block with the L button. Making jump the R button makes sense because the A and B buttons offer different options for fighting. One is for kick attacks and the other for punches. They can be combined and alternated depending on the timing of your attacks to do a more devastating move where there's this purple flash behind Buffy. But honestly, spamming punches and kicks gets the job done just fine. Much like the show, Buffy has to weaken the vampires she encounters before she can stake them. Pressing the start button opens up the inventory which offers a bevy of items to utilize once acquired. Pressing the A button when highlighted on a weapon in your inventory will equip it with a check mark signaling which one has been chosen. However, some weapons can be combined with items for more powerful attacks. At the bottom of the screen are items such as holy water, torches, crosses, and batteries for powered weapons. However, the manual doesn't clearly explain how to do this for most of the game. I ended up stumbling around with the items until I finally figured out how this inventory system works. When you select an item, it puts a check mark on it. Depending on which weapon or item you pick, it shows you which other one can be combined with it automatically. Initially, I read the manual instructions as press select on the secondary item after selecting the weapon, but no, this is incorrect. Basically, choose which item you want, and if you have inventory to use for that item, press select when back in the game and the item will pop up. Now they are combined for more devastating attacks. Once I figured out how this item combination worked, it made the game more interesting combat-wise, but since I got through most of the game without it, I'd say it wasn't ever necessary to advance. Most fights go something like this. Vampire pops up, kick him or her around for a bit, then equip the stake, and then send them to Deathsville with the A button. There's the occasional movement where you can just knock enemies into pits, throw them off cliffs, or even blow out windows behind you to let sunlight in. But most kills involve the basic combat and staking method. 
Initially, I felt like it was kinda tedious to have to keep going into the menu to select the steak, but again, late in the game, I realized you can just press the select button to bring it up by default if your hands are empty. This was a pretty smart decision by the developers. It keeps combat more free-flowing instead of being tethered to an inventory screen for every single fight. You ever play a game, but before you beat it, you end up finding out how to really play the game, so it just makes you want to replay it all over again? Yeah, that's this game. Mmm, totally. Are you eating ice cream with potato chips? What else am I supposed to do? Watch you talk about a video game? Alright, so clearly the game's combat, albeit fun and repetitive, is a bit of a challenge to master thanks to poor in-game and out-of-game instructions. I feel like this oversight could have been fixed if the developers made it more clear. While I didn't press the L button to block too much, I never really saw the point. Almost every enemy kill in normal mode gives health back courtesy of either a blue heart pickup or an orangey red one. The blue brings back a small portion while the other gives you back full life. Dying in the game typically puts you back to the beginning of a level or if dying during a boss battle, you get to try again. There are one-ups in the form of blue crystals with crosses on them, but if you lose your lives, it's game over. Thankfully, the game has unlimited continues, so you can keep trying if needed. However, if there's unlimited continues, why bother having a life system in the first place if either dying or continuing puts you at the same place in the stage? At the end of each stage, the game offers the opportunity to save, and when turning the game on, loading that save is possible. Having a battery backup on this one definitely helps, as many licensed games of this era were still using passwords, so it's nice to see a game based on a television show spring for a battery backup. The platforming and jumping mechanics are fun and very fair, mostly. Buffy can run when pressing a direction on the D-pad twice, and this coupled with a double jump really gets her around stages with ease. Though I have to admit, her running animation is a bit stiff. I never really found myself in a jam I couldn't get out of, platforming-wise. Buffy can duck and crawl for certain hard-to-reach locations. There's plenty of crumbling platforms and fake floors, as well as rocks to push to gain higher ground, ropes to climb across, steel bars to ascend to with the up button, and more. It's all really well designed and keeps the platforming engaging, which more than makes up for the visuals. Okay, I know this is Game Boy Advance, but honestly, it just doesn't look great. Backgrounds look particularly muddy no matter what setting you're in. Though, I will say there's some nice detail here and there. Wrath of the Dark Hole King has Buffy traversing city blocks, forests, graveyards, museums, industrial complexes, temples, and more. The locations themselves all look and feel different, but the textures here are just really bland aside from a few small details. I would have preferred they go with a more animated 2D look instead of the rendered sprites. Though I will say that I like how they change Buffy's outfits throughout the course of the game. Enemies range from vampires in various clothing, sometimes brandishing weapons, to lizard monsters, demons and snakes, bats, and rats. I'm not sure why, but sometimes the screen flashes green when attacking. I thought that was kind of odd. I sift through the manual to see why that was happening, but couldn't find anything. Buffy can't stake the demons and monsters, but I found that just mashing the buttons gets the job done easily enough. Boxes, crates, and barrels can be busted open to access weapons and items, and you'll get them sometimes during boss fights from your warrior boyfriend Riley, or from... I don't know who this guy is, but he just keeps getting captured. Maybe it's Jefferson Darcy from Married with Children? I smell crossover! Nah, no, that's just me. I pooted. You pooted? I tooted. You tooted? Okay, you got me. I upper decked your toilet. You're welcome. Ugh, somebody should slay you. I'd like to see him try. Most levels end when you either reach the exit or save all the Jefferson Darcys. There's bonus stages before a fight that let Buffy stock up on weapons before a big boss fight. Most of the boss fights require use of these weapons to take down multiple life bars similar to a beat-em-up, but the weapons all vary in quality, and in all honesty, if you play your cards right, you could beat them with just your regular attacks though it will take a lot longer to do it. The stake can be aimed down when a vamp falls, or used when thrusting towards, and most of the weapons are the same, albeit with projectile usage like the axe or the crossbow. The holy water travels with a bit of an arc. The glove of Minigon, which was talked up quite a bit in the cutscenes, is powerful, but it's not something that can be used on a whim. The laser rifle is a bit confusing, as it has a small and large battery pack, but also is a numbered collectible, and the flamethrower is... 
Okay, pretty dope. The only major disappointment overall was the extremely limited range of the knife, which appears to have some hit detection issues. This makes sense though, as you'll find yourself sometimes having trouble connecting with enemies. Sometimes you'll be standing on top of them, kicking in one direction while they're attacking in the other. While earlier I said the combat felt more complete once fully realized, the repetition and flaky hit detection does bring this one down a bit in the combat arena. Composed by Ikumizutani, Kinio Yamashita, and Tetsuare Watanabe, these three created the lion's share of music for Natsume during the Game Boy Advance era. While initially I was excited for the return of Yamashita's sound in yet another vampire hunting based video game, I realized that the music definitely was not going to echo the Castlevania flavor she'd created back in 1986. Instead, the composers relied on the atmosphere of the show to craft some tunes that fit more closely with a horror movie motif. Strings are more stabby, pianos are more creaky, and percussion is dampened down in tone. There's the occasional high-energy banger, but nevertheless, the tracks will definitely get stuck in your head while playing. And afterwards. They're perfect songs for what's happening in-game, but unlike most of Natsume's music, I doubt they'd be a good fit for your car stereo while you're cruising to hunt vamps. Here's just a few of my favorites. The end boss, the Dark Hole King, okay, I have to address this. The opening cutscene teases his look, but when you face him in the end, uh, he looks like a Power Ranger monster of the week. Which is super weird because the cover has what appears to be the master character from season one of the show. Why put the master on the cover of the game to give off a vibe that he was the Dark Hole King? I don't know, but I'm just happy to have shown this game off to the masses. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Wrath of the Dark Hole King is definitely a fun, sometimes frustrating romp through the show's season 4 stylings, but the end result remains an average experience at best. I'd like to maybe go back into the game now that I know how to play it to see if my praise can be a bit higher, but in general it's worth checking out for fans of the show or if you enjoy Natsume action games. Wrath of the Dark Hole King is certainly the best of the handheld Buffy adventures that are available, but it doesn't hold a candle to the far superior console games. Well, I'm just glad that's over. You know, the game was okay. I meant your review. Hey, how about you go fix my toilet? What do I look like? A plumber? Take it up with Giles. I'm out of here. <sighs> okay, well, that's all for now. You know, I don't really know how to end this one. Ooh, I could talk about my favorite episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You remember in Season 2, Episode 16, where Buffy gets turned into a rat? And then when Oz finds her, when the spell gets reversed, she's naked behind a bunch of boxes? Yeah, I think about that one a lot. You know what, um, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. Thanks to all Patreon supporters, but especially the Morningstar Whip tier and up. They are Sam Schaefer, Scott McElhone, Venthros, Great White North Presents, Nintendo, Bryce, 
Derek Demitter, and Trevin Adams. Your continued support helps fund reviews like this one, which would simply not be possible without the donations from Patreon members. I appreciate each and every one of you for continuing to help me make the content that you want to see. Classic, goofy YouTube video game reviews. If anyone is interested, just a dollar down gets you access to exclusive streams on Discord, director's cut commentary for past episodes, a free sticker, regular updates on upcoming reviews, and more. Check it out at patreon.com forward slash dongled. I hate to sound like a typical YouTuber, but if Patreon is not your thing and you still want to help get the word out, share this video on social media. Exposure really helps, so if you like these videos and think your friends will too, sharing it with them means a lot. Want more Dude You Haven't Played This Game? Check out the videos enclosed below. You can click on the left hand side or the right hand side for a totally different but totally awesome review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Dude You Haven't Played This Game.